Hello horror fans and welcome back to another recap. I'm continuing with my experiments as today's pick comes from the mind of the Parasite director Bong Joon-ho. It's a Korean creature film called The Host and some of you may already have seen it considering it's a cult classic. Alright enough talk, let me host this recap now. Oh and sorry about the pronunciation, I don't speak Korean so I really hope I get some of these names right. Anyway, the movie begins with a couple of doctors cleaning up their lab. There's an old American guy who wants to pour hell a lot of formaldehyde into the Han River because the bottles have gotten really old. His assistant Kim ain't for that kind of pollution, but the oldie exploits his senior position to make it happen. He wants Kim to be broad minded and convinces him that it's the right thing to do. Yeah, we all know what happens when you have that kind of mentality. The chemical gets dumped into the river and we fast forward to a couple of fishermen catching something, uh, pretty unique. It's got a lot of tails and it's pretty slimy too, but we don't see it just yet. It escapes before they can check it out any further, but that thing's definitely coming back soon. Yep, these are proper Godzilla vibes. Six years have passed and now we see this dude jumping off the bridge in one of the film's most beautifully directed shots. Hmm, looks like that mutant fish is getting a free meal. Okay, so now that the intro is done, we finally meet our lead character, Park Gang Du. He's uh, not exactly hero material from whatever we can see. He's a lousy worker at his dad's store and an absent minded father to his daughter, Park Hun Xiao. The news talks about that suicidal dude who looks like he's been beaten up. But the father daughter duo doesn't care about that. Instead, they watch Gang Du's sister, Park Nam Ju, compete in the archery finals, but Grandpa Park Hee Bung interrupts his son because he's been munching on a customer's treats. Damn bro, even Mackie D's employees don't stoop that low. Gang Du goes out of the trailer to do some customer relations, but then he notices some weird shit. It's that freaking monster fish and it's all grown up. Instead of trying to call the cops or do something sensible, the crowd just keeps feeding it with their food. So yeah, as you'd expect, the monster gets greedy and attacks everyone. Yikes, I didn't expect them to do the creature reveal so early. That thing looks so ugly, you can make a million dollars on that as an NFT. We get some pretty nasty sequences as the monster terrorizes everyone at the park while Hee Bong and Hyun Xiao watch the archery game. Gang Du and an American sergeant named Donald White try to help out by attacking the monster like a bunch of wild idiots. It's not like they were going to do any damage with a bunch of rocks, so Donald gets eaten up pretty quickly. However, Gang Du goes full beast mode and manages to make it bleed. The monster is pissed now, so he makes a run for it. Nam Ju loses the game, so Hyun Seo gets out of the trailer for some fresh air. Suddenly, she gets grabbed by Gang Du as everyone runs away from that freaking fish face. They trip and fall, causing Gang Du to show off his horrible dad skills again. He grabs somebody else's kid instead of Hyun Seo. Bruh. Maybe you and your daughter would have been better off inside that trailer. Anyway, so yeah, the monster grabs Hun Xiao and dives inside the river now that it's got enough snacks. Gang Du dives in after it, but that's only for some added drama. The monster spits out Donald and gets away with the poor kid. Now that is what I call an opening sequence. Okay, now it's time for the emotional stuff. Everyone mourns the loss of their loved ones and the Park family has it worst. Nam Ju joins in on the crying along with her brother Park Nam Il. They're really grieving hard, but the reporters just take this as a chance to get some extra footage for their channels. Nam Il's pretty pissed at Gang Du for what he did, and to be honest, he's somewhat justified. That dude's a total mess. Anyway, the government officials get involved and separate everyone who's been in contact with the creature. That basically means the entire Park family considering Gang Du's got the monster blood on his freaking face. The media starts to spread a narrative that anyone coming into contact with this creature gets infected with some virus. And they're using Donald as an example of this and sheesh, his infection looks really nasty. The science guys want to run some testing on Gang Du, so they tell him not to eat. But of course, he's not going to follow that shit and stick some snacks into his belly later that night. But then he gets a phone call from Hun Xiao. She's still alive and apparently in some sewer. Meanwhile, the fish monster grabs some more treats when it captures a bunch of research dudes next to the river. The creature drops off their bodies in this secret lair. Ha, ah, so Fishface likes to store his food for later. Everyone's dead except Hyun Xiao. She manages to get a hold of the phone from the newest victim. And I think that this was the phone that she used to contact her dad. At the quarantine center, 
Gangbu tries to explain that his daughter's alive, but none of the officers believe him. He even gives them a practical display of how the monster could have kept her alive, but it doesn't work either. There's only one way to go now, and that's the illegal kind. The family arranges for an escape and gets the hell out of the facility a bit too easily. I mean, is it really how the security works over there? Anyway, He Bong sorts out some cash and gets everyone a bunch of weapons. They disguise themselves as fumigators and sneak into the sewer after winning over the managing officer with a bunch of dimes. No wonder shit went down this way. Their bribe standard is pretty low. The family goes about exploring the sewers after a little taste of social commentary. They hear a sound and start firing, but it's nothing. Well, it's actually just a couple of brothers, Sejin and Seju. The brothers head on over to He Bong's store and steal some of his food because it's apparently the right of the hungry or something like that. But the monster is against robbing, so it finds them and takes them away. The Park family also reaches the store and eats some food. But wait, is that Hyun Seo? Bruh, are these people tripping or something? No, wait, that's more of an artistic expression of grief and denial. Hey, I'm smart. Anyway, okay, so the monster makes another drop off at its disposal center, and once again, it's only the kid, Seju, who survives. What is this, some kind of holy ring of fire shit? Back to the family now, and everyone's chilling together and somewhat bonding for a bit until they notice that ugly freak soaking in some rain. It's really feeling the vibes too. They attack it and eventually land a shotgun blast to its face after a brief struggle. It's still alive though, and after a lot of shooting and screaming, Grandpa gets whacked to the floor and dies instantly. Shit. That's nasty. Namju and Nam Il ain't got time to grieve, so they run away. But Gangdu's a big crybaby, so he gets captured by the authorities. Now the media reveal that Donald apparently died from the virus. So the government thinks it's a good idea to release a deadly gas called Agent Yellow. It can kill any biological being, so I guess they've had enough of this shit and just want to kill this monster now. Nam Il meets an old buddy who works at a telecom firm. He wants his help to track down Hyun Xiao's call. He brings him to his office where Nam Il begins the process, but his friends only brought him there as a trap. Basically, he's a guy in debt who wants to claim his reward money. You really can't trust anyone nowadays, eh? Anyway, Nam Il manages to identify her location before getting the hell out of there. The mob chases after him, but he avoids getting caught and passes out under a bridge. He does manage to send Hyun Seo's location to Nam Ju before he dozes off though. Nam Ju reaches the spot and informs Gang Du about it just before he gets knocked out by the monster. She falls into a narrow pit so the ugly mother lover can't get her, and then he runs away. Gang Du tries to escape to the lab and look for his daughter, but that doesn't work out and he gets experimented upon. An American doctor drops by with Kim as his translator. He shows Gang Du some compassion by ordering the others to stop. Then he asks some relevant questions about his daughter, but that's just to assess his mental condition. He declares that Gang Du's gone crazy and he wants to operate on his brain to see if the virus is actually real. Kim's a little confused by this, so the doc reveals a super top secret to him. There's no virus at all. Ha. <laughs> There's no virus at all. Gang Du listens in on this and asks to be freed, but we've seen enough of this virus related agenda in real life to know what's really going on here. They order a lobotomy on him just to keep him quiet. Later, Hyun Seo and Si Ju try to escape by making a rope with the clothes of the victims, but they get interrupted by the monster. It started to eat its food properly now, as can be seen by all those freaking skeletons it pukes out from its mouth, as if it's just had too many vodka shots. It notices the kids and tries to get them too, but they manage to hide inside a small corner to avoid becoming fish food. Gang Du's operation is gonna start now, but he takes a doctor hostage and manages to get out of the lab prison. He interrupts the picnic outside and makes his escape in an ambulance. Nam Il also wakes up too and makes new friends in a homeless guy who helps him make some weapons to help fight the monster as they head towards the Han River. We also learn that there's a massive protest happening there because that's the release point of Agent Yellow. Back in the lair, the kids try to make their way out while the monster snores away. Hyun Seo reaches the rope after a dramatic leap but gets caught by the monster's tail even while it's asleep. That's not for long though, as it wakes up and chases after them. This time, it catches the kids before they can hide. Gang Du reaches the light too, but sees all the skeletons and fears the worst. Then, he sees the monster pass by, and it's got someone in its mouth. Gang Du believes his daughter's still alive, so he chases after it. The fish face notices the protest going on near the river and figures it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. Nam Ju finally wakes up too and joins Nam Il and his buddy as they head towards the river. Agent Yellow is released while the monster comes 
next to the spot, and the gas does seem to weaken it, but it doesn't kill it. Gangdu takes this chance to open up its mouth and pull out both the kids. Qian Xiao protected Si Ju while they were inside, so he survives, but she looks pretty dead. Naturally, Gangdu loses his shit and finds a pole to attack the monster with. The family comes together and chases after Fishface as it tries to escape. Nam Il messes up a clean shot when his buddy distracts the creature by pouring fuel on it, but Nam Ju makes up for it by showing off her archery skills. She fires a flaming arrow and hits the bullseye. The arrow lights up the slime ball, so it tries to run to the river, but then Gangdu pops up at the last minute to shove the pole down its throat and kill it once and for all. Hell yeah. Minus all the deaths though. It's been a while after the incident and now we can see a well-groomed Gangdu who's adopted Siju and also inherited his dad's store. He hears something strange and grabs his gun, but it's just his anxiety kicking in. The movie ends with this new father-son duo enjoying their food as they turn off the news that's still going on about the incident. Wow. That was a long ride, but it was a pretty good one. Korean films are really high quality, and it makes me wonder if I should explore more of world cinema. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like and share if you want to keep up with all my recaps, and then hit up my Patreon link in the description if you want some exclusive content. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.